welcome. Uh, my name is Carol Reese. I'm a master gardener. I have been for uh, a long time, really long time. Um, and I've been a gardener for 45 years. Um, bearded iris. Iris was the personification of the rainbow and a messenger for the gods in Greek mythology. Uh, we have bearded iris. Onco cyclus iris, regalia iris, in the rhizomatis. Now, when I'm talking about rhizomatis iris, when you have bearded irises, that's a rhizomatis iris. This is the rhizome. This is a storage mechanism for carbohydrates, which is what the, the plant uses as uh, growth. It can, when it's growing, it contributes. When it's uh, in periods of drought or stress, it will take from this. So it gets bigger and smaller. But this is where it stores its nutrients, is this little thing. That's not the roots. These, these are the roots. These hanging down. Um, this, uh, this plant propagates by division and by seed. The division part, this will continue to grow and eventually at the end of this, this will send off a flower. You get a stalk then that portion of the plant will die. You'll get additional growth on either side, and they'll head off in different directions. That will be next year's flower. It will rely upon the nutrients that are stored in this rhizome. The, ry uh, the iris is an incredibly cool plant. Um, you see the, the thing, the little, the little furry thing on the, on the falls. There's uprights and there's falls, the petals. The little furry thing is the beard. Um, and that's where the bearded iris term comes from. They grow in partial shade to full sun. I planted these in partial shade and now it's full shade, which is why they're not blooming anymore. Uh, six groups, miniature dwarf bearded, standard dwarf bearded, intermediate bearded, miniature tall bearded, border bearded, and tall bearded. Uh, some bearded irises rebloom in the summer or the fall. Whenever you have a rebloomer, that means that you're going to get a diminished bloom. Instead of having one big bloom in the spring or in the summer, you're going to get a medium bloom and then another medium bloom at the end of the season. Um, told you about the roots. It's planted horizontally with the surface of the rhizome showing at or slightly above the soil level. True roots are below the rhizome and dangle below it. In this area with the kind of um, drainage problems we look at, you want to build your soil up so you have a mound, and the iris being the mound, eventually that mound will pack down uh, quite a bit, but uh, that, that will be for long, longevity. Your professional iris people usually mound their soil up and plant that iris like this. You plant it in the direction you want it to grow. This iris is going to grow this way. If you don't want it to grow that way, plant it another way. Is that the opposite way of the root thing? Yes. The yes. Okay. Of the rhizome. Yeah. How deep do you plant it? Uh, this should be just below the surface of the soil, the rhizome. Okay. Now, when you plant these a lot of the time, you'll cut off this fan so it doesn't get caught in the wind and pull to either side. If it does pull to either side, it'll pull the roots up out of the soil. It depends on where you plant it. If you think it's going to be all right, you'll be fine. I've also taken twigs, a, a fork and a twig, yeah. you know, where you have a twig and it goes off like this. Well, I cut it, cut it, cut it, and, and stick it down like a little, like a little tent stake. Mm -hmm. I don't go through. I just lock it in place. Yeah. And occasionally you got to replant them. It just, that's just the way of the world. Um, but um, uh, soil should be slightly acid. Um, full sun for bloom, shade will encourage plant not to bloom. If blooms fail, the plant may be too crowded, separate, and replant every two to six years. Um, there's only a, a limited number of resources in any plant around the, the roots where you plant your plant. So um, that's why crowd, that's why you weed, is because there's X number of nutrients. And if the weeds are sucking up those nutrients, your plant's not getting them. I would love to say, no, you don't have to weed. Um, but yeah, so you, you do have to work the, the bed. 
uh, they're magnificent. And some of them have good scent, scents, nose, scent, not, not brains. <laughs> plant in, okay, and these are early. This plant is early, like, and I'll be bringing more for y'all. Uh, plant in July, August, or September. Uh, full sun. I think that's because they tend to bloom in the coming weeks. That's when you'll see blooms. Um, Well-drained soil. If soil is heavy, amend with organic material. pH is 6.8, which is slightly acid. Amend if necessary. Lime for acidic, sulfur for alkaline. Uh, and you can also buy fertilizer that have uh, built-in pH adjusters. So you can buy fertilizers that will fertilize your uh, acid-loving plants, like your azaleas, your camellias, your rhododendrons. Um, it, and it's built in. Water enough to keep the top three inches of soil moist. Do not overwater. Uh, irises can take a ton of water in the spring, but come summer they won't like it. That's a lot the case with a lot of bulbs. They, you can saturate them in the spring and they're growing and they love it, but come summer, if, you, if they're in a wet spot, they will rot. Um, fertilize with 10, 10, 10 in early spring and after bloom. Okay, there's your Oncocyclus iris. Doesn't like summer rain, needs dry conditions after blooming. These are just your bearded irises, guys. There's even more irises out there. Uh, bloom in the spring and the fall. Fertile, sharply drained soil with a dry, dormant period after flowering. Soil should be alkaline. We just said that the soil for the other one should be uh, acid. Very picky of moist conditions. Regalia. Aral irises and species irises of the botanical sections are hi and hybrids involving only these two sections. The Oncocyclus and Regalia are species irises and hybrids of the two are common. Many of the irises that we see have some of these genetics. Crested iris, this does very well here. Does very well in damp woodlands, does very well in rock gardens. This is iris cristata. Uh, it comes in a very pale blue and it comes in a medium uh, purple. But um, this is really good. Beardless irises, you have your water irises, you have Siberian irises. Pacific Coast irises, and your Spuria irises. Uh, Siberians, do, uh, they don't have a rhizome. They do best with cooler conditions, regular moisture, slightly acid soil. Blooms are blue, purple, and red violet. One of the best ones I ever saw was something called uh, chilled wine. It's, a mag it's such a good looking iris. Chilled, chilled wine. 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 And it was the prettiest iris I, I it was magnificent. Um, most attractive in established clumps. Spuria, we're not, we don't do much with those. Pacific Coast, we don't do much with those, though they are pretty good looking. And water iris. Bulbous irises, reticulata, that's your small little bitty ones. And Juno, Ziphium. This is just to give you guys an idea of the different irises. Bacteria, iris diseases and pests. Bacteria leaf blight, Botryides, uh, rhizome rot, crown rot, ink spot, leaf spot, nematode, soft rot virus. Whenever you look at a disease of a plant, first thing you do is identify the plant. Then it's much easier. Don't look at a disease and then try to figure out what the disease is. Look at the plant that you're looking at and then go to the diseases that are common in that plant. It's much easier that way. And we don't, it's, I'm running up on time, so we don't need to do daylilies. We'll save daylilies for another day. I've, I've, I've bent your ear enough for one day. But I do thank you for your patience. Mm -hmm.